Okay, so let's take a look at how to do unit tests in Java. Okay, so right here what we can see is we have a main method in a regular main class in Java and it prints out hello to the screen. That's not what we're interested in. What we want to do is see what happens when we have a, a method that needs to be tested to see that it's working properly. And that's what we mean by unit testing. So right here, I'm going to make a new one. Um, let's see with an integer output and my method under test. And we're going to have an input of um, my variable like that. And now I'm going to just return uh, my variable times five. So just a simple little conversion right there. So nothing really special. Um, and you know, I can, I can run this within my main method if I wanted to, but what I'm going to do is create a test for this. And to do that, I'm going to make a new class and call it testing class like this. And I'm going to have a uh, public void uh, my test one and nothing in the input. And I'm going to create my test inside of here. But to do that, I need to import uh, JUnit. So go to project structure in files in IntelliJ, libraries plus Maven and JUnit like this and do a search for it. And so I will download JUnit 4 from the internet through the Maven tool. And there we go. I'm looking for this one right here. So one of these latest ones doesn't really matter. JUnit, JUnit 4.13.2, like that. And next up, I want to uh, import certain uh, classes that are related to doing the tests. And so I'm just going to type in assert equals and just put the parentheses in. IntelliJ prompts me to import the static method. I say, yes, please. And there it is right there. Okay. So in order to see how this works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put assert equals right here. I'm just going to put two numbers. The first one's going to be the expected result. And the second one is going to be the uh, actual um, real result value. So I'm going to say one and then one. And you'll see that IntelliJ annotates it or, or puts up little uh, note right here that says the very first input uh, argument is going to be the expected value. And the second one is the actual value. Fantastic. Um, now I'm going to tell IntelliJ that this method is a unit test testing method. So I put the annotation of test on there. It turns yellow. And then you can see the green triangle for running that appears to the left. I hit this and my unit test is run inside of IntelliJ. You can see it says tests are passed. Fantastic. There's no error message. Wonderful. Well, let's imagine that the expected value was one, but the actual value was two. I'm going to run this now and I will get an error. So what it's saying right here is that I was expecting to have a number of one coming out of this test, but the actual value was two. So IntelliJ Java says there's an assertion error right here. There's a problem. And so, so at this stage, we can go and fix whatever that problem was. Now, typically, uh, if uh, you're doing something like this, you could also, if you wanted to insert your own custom message. So let me see, I'm going to do a custom message like this. I'm going to go error. This is my custom message in test one like that. And so if I run this, I can get the unit test to tell me a specific message, which can be really important. If you have a lot of testing that you're doing, uh, it can get complicated at some point and you might have dozens of individual tests and you might want to provide a more clear reason for why that test failed to yourself or to your teammates. All right. So I've got that next. We can do assertion for equality tests in uh, J unit testing. And what you're doing is you're comparing uh, one number versus another number. And if there isn't an exact match, then it fails. But in a lot of programs, 
we either have ranges of uh, values under which we would test, say, integers, or maybe we have floating point numbers or double precision floating point numbers that aren't exact values. Let's say, for instance, we had 1.0 and 1.0 as the expected and actual values. This might work. Let's take a look. In this case, it doesn't because uh, there's an expectation of a delta, which is basically a, a, um, a margin under which equality should run. And this makes sense because you can't really have exact matches between two different floating point numbers. It's It really doesn't work that way. Um, there's just too many decimal points, right? So what we do instead is we say that there is a margin under which the equality will work. And we could do something like this. 0 0.005 like that. And if I run it like this, the first, the expected and the actual are matches within a boundary of 0 0.05, which means if say the expected value is 1.0 and my actual was 0 0.02, it should work and it does. So you can have ranges under which this would work. Next, let's test this out for our um, method over here. Okay, so my method right here is my method under test, and we has a certain input, and then it will return that multiplied by five as the answer. Okay, so my uh, in int insertion value is equal to say ten int expected value is going to be um, 50 in this case and int actual value we won't give it a, a value all right now I'm going to get rid of this message so that it's not in the way and right here I'm going to I'm just gonna get rid of this Let's start again I'm going to say Here's my expected value as basically a parameter, um, a variable. And next, I'm going to say the actual value, well, um, let's see, we can do it like this, actual value like this. And then what I do is I say actual value is equal to, um, let me see, we called it main class dot my method under test. I'm going to insert a value into it. And so the actual value is the value that's returned from my method under test. Let's see if this works. So I run. And it worked just fine. Let's imagine that I made a mistake inside of here and made that multiplied by 50. I goofed. There was an issue with how I was running it or programming it up. Now I'm going to run it and Here's my error right here. Okay, so it expected a value of 50, but because I was multiplying by the wrong value, the actual value returned was 500. Okay, so this can work out really well for testing your um, methods that you're creating. And you can do tests like this. You can run banks of, um, of tests. You know, you could put them all into a for loop and you can iterate through, say, randomized values, etc. That, that can work out really well. Another thing that you can do is you can test for arrays. So to see if uh, one array that comes out of uh, a method is going to be uh, equal to the expected value of the array. So I'm not going to create a new method to do this. I'm just going to show you how to do it uh, in terms of just array values. So let's say um, that I'm not going to have that right there. I'm going to say the expected value is going to be an array. One, two, three, actually 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, like that. And my actual value is going to be an array as well. And we're going to make it equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 like that. We can get rid of this because we're just going to run two different values 
of arrays in here. So we're going to say assert, uh, is it array? Yeah, array equals like that. And it's going to be, I have to import that right there. And it's going to be the expected value of the array versus the actual value of the array. We run this run and it passes because they're exactly the same arrays. But let's imagine that you had a method that was uh, changing the value of the array and you expected 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. But let's say the value returned here was 300. So if I run this, the unit tester will tell me that the arrays first differed at element two. Okay, this is element zero element one, element two, right? And the expected value was 30, but the actual value was 300. So we can have values returned from methods that are in array form. And our unit tester will also be able to figure out where the error was in what part of the array. So if you have large arrays, maybe you're doing uh, uh, image manipulation, things like that, you can spot individual differences using the unit testing as well. Okay, so that is a brief overview of unit testing. We've done a few examples with just straight out numbers, but you can also use methods being called. And so you could call a method in your expected value. You can call a method in your actual value. This is actually how we do it with um, automated grading assignments in the class where there's a teacher value that comes out of here for the expected value and the student's value comes out as the actual value and we do a comparison between the two to see if the student values meet the teacher's expected or reference values. So unit testing, super important. It's applicable to projects and assignments and we expect to see that done in courses like EECS 1021. All right, take care everyone. Bye.